It's the 30 minute music hour. I'm Andy Moore. Tonight, an evening with Peter Yarrow. And frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Puff the magic dragon. Yes, he lived by the sea. And frolicked in the autumn mist in Madison County. Little Jackie Paper, he loved the rascal puff, and he brought him strings and sealing wax and other fancy stuff. Oh, puff, the magic dragon lived by the sea. Frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Puff the magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in the autumn mist right here with you and me. Together they would travel on a boat with billowed sail. And Jackie kept a lookout, perched on Puff's gigantic tail. Noble kings and princes would bow whene'er they came. Pirate ships would lower their flags when Puff brought out his name. Oh, Puff, the magic drag. You can sing along. Lived by, frolicked in the autumn mist. Frolicked in the autumn in a land, in a land called Hanali. You used to sing along. But the match, that's the way magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked and frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called Hanali. Well, a dragon lives forever. But not so little girls and boys. Painted wings and giant's rings make way for other toys. One gray night it happened, jacket paper came no more. Puff that mighty dragon, he ceased his fearless roar. His head was bent in sorrow. Green scales fell like rain. Puff no longer went to play along the cherry lane without his lifelong friend. Puff could not be brave. So Puff, that mighty dragon, sadly slipped into his cave. Actually, I'm gonna sing you another end because I don't want you to be sad anymore. I can change this song any way I want. You know why? Because I wrote it with my friend 50 years ago. And it's always been in my mind to say that really the end of this song is loving and good for humankind. Jackie did leave Puff, and he grew up, as we all do. And he did his part to try to help to save a challenged world. That is true. And he fell in love, and he and his beloved had a child. And after a while, it became very clear that it had been a long while before Puff could have an indication that Jackie still loved him so much. So Jackie told his daughter, why don't you go and do lunch <laughs> with Puff and, and play with him like I used to do and hear some fancy stuff and uh, dragon's rings and magic stuff and, and you can have him just like had him too. So his daughter 
whose name was Sandy, Sandy Paper, went to Hunley, and there was Puff. And of course, Puff was lonely as he could be. And he said, Jackie, she said, no, I look like my daddy, I'm Sandy. Sandy, he said, can we play together? She said, of course, Puff. And Jackie loves you very much. He's never forgotten you. And that's why Puff is happy. And he's going to live forever, too. Just as all dragons will if they sing his song like me and you right now. Puff the magic dragon lived by the sea. A little louder. And frolicked in the autumn mist in a land called, you don't know this song, Lee. Oh, Puff the magic dragon lived by the sea and frolicked in in a land called Hanali. And that's the problem we have with this song, is that the young people have forgotten how to sing. Uh, we used to sing all the time, folks. We used to sing at marches, we used to sing. At parties, we used to sing because we loved each other and it formed a sense of community. Whether it was singing, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream when we were younger, or whether it was singing Puff the Magic Dragon, or this song, at the opening of the March on Washington in 1969 to end the war in Vietnam. At the time, this was a song of peace. It has lasted all this time, and now it has, like all songs, different meanings. However, Puff the Magic Dragon, forget it. There's nothing about drugs, I promise you. But this... <clears throat> Okay, you don't believe me. I, saw, I just saw you go like, don't roll your eyes at me. It's not the way to behave. Respect my years. I was 20 years old 50 years ago. I wrote this song with Lenny Lipton. I was at Cornell. I know, a minor institution to you. But it was an institution of learning. And at that time in 1959, nobody knew about drugs. The, mo the farthest anybody got was beer. Ah, I was too innocent. Yes, there was a time I was too innocent. Okay, in any event, this has other meanings. It's not specifically about peace, but it's not not about peace. Listen to it and you'll understand. It's one of the songs that I've written that, that I'm proud of in special ways. Tell me why you're crying, my son I know you're frightened like everyone Is it the thunder in the distance you fear? Will it help if I stay very near? You know I am here And if you take my hand, my son all will be well when the day is done And if you take my hand, my son All will be well when the day is done Day is done When the day is done When the day is done When the day is done Do you ask why I'm sighing, my son? You shall inherit what humankind has done. In a world filled with sorrow and woe, if you ask me why, why this is so, I really don't know. But if you take my hand, my son, all will be well when the day is done 
And if you take my hand, my son, all will be well when the day is done. 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 Now in the third verse, the father wonders why the son is smiling, and then he realizes the son has not grown up yet to be cynical, to be disaffected, to be disappointed and alienated. The son is filled with hope and promise, so he says to his son, take my hand, my son. Now it's time for you to infuse me with hope and courage and lead me. That's the other meaning of the song. Tell me why you're smiling, my son. Is there a secret you can tell everyone? Do you know more than those that are wise? Can you see what we all, we all disguise through your loving eyes? And if you take my hand, my son, all will be well when the day is done. And if you take my hand, my son, all will be well when the day is done. Day is done when the day is done. Day is done, day is done. Day is done, day is done. When the day is done. Yay! I heard you singing around there. I was there. singing, but what did you think of that singing? I loved it. Did I loved you? it. I want to sing a song with you now. I want now. Right, right this now. second? Yes. What? Get your ukulele. All I right. know All about right. your ukulele. Okay. All uh, right. <clears throat> All right. Here it All is. Right. The secret weapon. This is, I used to sing this at Cornell uh, with the kids when I saw them transform by singing together. This was in 1959 where their consciousness was zilch. You know, there was, it was all a fraternity system and blacks were invisible and women were, you know, uh, 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 trading beads. Um, the, uh, and when they would sing this song, tr traditional song, and others, they'd become caring, hopeful, wonderful people. And seeing that, instead of going into what I should have done, which is market research, and it's a pity the <laughs> field of market research lost me, I went to Greenwich Village and sang folk music. Here we go. See. We sail on the sloop John B. My grandfather and me. Around Nassau town we did go. Drinking all night. Got into a fight. I feel so broke up, I want to go home. So hoist up the John B. sails, see how the mainsail set. Call for the captain ashore, let me go home. I want to go home. Yay! <laughs> what a treat. What Thank a treat you. is right. How do you think I would have done at Cornell? I think you would have done brilliantly, but you would not have been on the 11-year plan. In those days, <laughs> you, would have, you would have flunked out three times, <laughs> but gotten year. through it in seven years. <laughs> oh, that would have been cheaper. Day is Done mm -hmm. was the second song before Peter and I sang together. Um, it's also the backdrop of this beautiful book. It is, and you see, there, not, there aren't any human beings in this until the very last pages. They're all 
They're all bears and owls and deers, and it's all daddies holding their... Look at this. I have a granddaughter, Valentina, and I hold her like this. We must have a sense that, uh, <clears throat> that we care about each other. Care about each other not just in feeling but in actions, that we act respectfully towards one another. When people are here and when they're gone, and a very dear person is gone, Yes. You know, from your family, from your musical family. That's true. And we're bar barely a week from Mary's memorial. That's what right. was that like? Well, forgive me for this, but life intervenes. Um, the memorial was an extraordinary expression of an outpouring of, of the spirit that uh, she inspired in people and that uh, they in turn inspired in her. When you heard, it was interesting, it wasn't just a remembrance of her, it was, in the very best of senses, the, the imperative of carrying on. And then the sweetness of this, it says, when Tom Paxton sang this, it's a lesson too late for the learning made of sand made of sand in the wink of an eye my soul is turning in your hand in your hand are you going away with no word of farewell will there be not a trace left behind well, I could have loved you better I didn't mean to be unkind You know, that was the last thing on my mind And the whole audience, 2,000 people in this Riverside church sang together the song that Mary had made iconic And we said goodbye to her And it says, as I lie in my bed in the morning without you Each song in my breast dies a morning when I first sang that with Tom after Mary died, we were on a book tour together because he has a, <clears throat> uh, his first uh, book out that I'm working with him on, a marvelous toy. It brought us both to tears because our songs, they don't die a born in, but there's a part of us that's missing. That <clears throat> Mary was uh, a remarkable person as Gloria Steinem, you know, contributed her thoughts. She allowed women to look at themselves and say, I don't have to be secretive, I don't have to be manipulative. I can be a real parity person with others. Uh, and she, when, when, for instance, I was talking about David Hawk when we first met, his wife, Joan Libby Hawk, said, when I saw Mary, I said, oh my God, you know, I can be like that. And guess what? The men never minded it, you know. The men adored Mary, and yet she was straight from that. When you heard her singing, you didn't say, oh, what an extraordinary voice. Her technique is off the scales. You just heard that yearning. So when she sang, If you miss the train I'm on, you will know that I am gone. You can hear whistle blow a hundred miles sing with me now a hundred miles a hundred miles a hundred miles a hundred miles you can hear the whistle blow a hundred miles she wasn't just talking about somebody who said I don't have a shirt on my back and a penny to my name, I can't go home. She's talking about a nation that couldn't go home to what we believed in until we did address the civil rights movement. And there, her yearning for something better was what characterized the voice of Mary Travers to all of America. Musically speaking, to the musician in her, to the musician in, in the trio, yeah. how did you... <coughs> 
play off of her voice. You know, um, Mary has the character of a lead voice. You, your, vo your, your attention is drawn to it. And she and I had voices that could blend extraordinarily. In fact, there were a lot of portions where we sang duo. For instance, we'd do Jesus Met the Women and the Woman at the Well. And the voices were like a Rothko painting where you can't tell where one uh, color ends and the other one begins. Uh, it's like something that happens in a family, as, as it does with my daughter, with whom I sing on all of these songs in the books, uh, like Day is Done. So it's like the Everly Brothers, you know? Mm -hmm. So Mary and I, we were, grow we were brought up in the same political and musical traditions. Noel, however, Noel Paul, if you listen to him, had a different kind of voice. If you listen to Lemon Tree, you know, at the first... In it. I'll play a little bit. For the, those of you who don't know, when I was just a lad of ten, my father said to me, come here and take a lesson from the lovely lemon tree. Don't put your faith in love, my boy, my father said to me, I think you'll find that love is like the lovely lemon tree. Now, he sang it like a crooner because mm -hmm. his background was pop and rock even had a group called uh, uh, the Birds of Paradise. So he had to morph into uh, our relationship. But we learned from him too mm -hmm. because he also had jazz mm -hmm. when he sang. You know the song that he wrote called What's Her Name? I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No. It's kind of... It's, but you can hey, hear he's, he's almost ready to scat. Um, something. Yes, exactly. And it was he that fell in love with the Beatles and kind of brought us to kind of dig with it. He wrote the song, I dig rock and roll music and I love okay. to get the chance. I, I hope that you can sing a couple of more songs in just a moment, but I, I, have, have you ever been nervous before a performance? Oh, yeah. Yes, even still? No. No. No, no, I'm not on stage, as you have found out, until I'm actually am doing it. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, in order to keep myself in another place where it's real, I'm, I tend to be very uh, kind of uh, uh, Yet you appeared in, in, in places that, would, that, that some people would, could hardly stand the thought of performing, like sure. uh, the, the John F. Kennedy White House. What was that like? Uh, we sang at the National Guard Armory. Um, after his first year in a presidency to honor him and raise money. And at that gathering, there were icons such as Yves Montand, Carol Burnett, um, uh, Jean Kelly, uh, uh, Joan Sutherland, the opera singer. After, and we sang Lemon Tree and If I Had a Hammer. If I Had a Hammer was a huge hit at that point. And it was after Lemon Tree, our second hit. <laughs> We went to the vice president's home where we sang Mary in her long, full length, um, a satin white gown. I want to tell you, you know, Mary and I were brother and sister, but if that had not been the case, I mean, nobody could stand how beautiful she was. She was just exquisite. Of course, the president couldn't have been less interested in her. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He had an eye for the women. And Jackie adored her, too. And at a certain point, she sang 500 Miles, mm -hmm. and everybody just went, oh. Mm -hmm. And then we sang Puff the Magic Dragon. And before I sang it, I said, you know, because folk music had not become popular, I said, you know, this is called folk music. And in folk music, it's very common for people, rather than standing as you are, to sit down on the rug and, and share with us and just sing along. And guess who the first person sitting on the rug was? The president. And he sat down, and of course everybody else sat down. Hmm. And, uh, but there were, no young, there were no old people in hmm. the White House then who couldn't sit down on the rug. It was all young people. It was a very young president. Mm -hmm. And he said he, went, he was the first one to sit. We sat down and we sang together. And at the end of it, 
Jackie stayed longer than she had for a long time at any party, and the band that was really Lawrence Welk kind of music, or maybe it was Lawrence Welk himself, broke into the twist, and there was, there was uh, <laughs> Lyndon Johnson twisting with Mary Tra It was, it just broke it up into a sense of warmth and humanity as folk music mm. does, and that's really the mm. point I want to make. All of these songs that I'm singing now, uh, or that are in the books that I've done, are free for all educators to bring back to the lives of children. Go and download them for free from OperationRespect.org, which is the nonprofit that I founded at 10 years I ago. I want to ask you a little more about that in our next um, brief interview segment, but I'd like to trot away now and ask you to, to sing a couple of songs I'd with like me out to, of your hair. I'd like you to trot away. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you, and I'm looking for my capo. I want to sing a song that my daughter loved. Uh, we sing it uh, sometimes when we're in concert. Bethany Yarrow is a wonderful singer by herself, mainly international kind of roots music. Now she's in France singing. But um, uh, when she, the, as a child, she loved this song, and I, I thought I'd sing it for you. If I had wings, no one would ask me Should I fly? The bird sings, no one asks why I can see in myself Wings as I feel them If you see something else Keep your thoughts to yourself I'll fly free then Yesterday's eyes see their colors fading away They see their sun turning to gray You can't share in a dream that you don't believe in If you say that you see and pretend to be me You won't be then if I had wings, no one would ask me, should I fly? If I had wings, no one would ask me, should I fly? How can you ask if I'm happy going my way? You might as well ask a child to play. There's no need to discuss or understand me. I won't ask of myself to become something else. I'll just be me. If I had wings, no one would ask me, should I fly? Uh -uh. The bird sings, no one asks her why. I can see in myself wings as I feel them. If you see something else, keep your thoughts to yourself. I'll fly free then. If you had wings, no one would ask you, should you fly? If we have wings, no one asks us. Grow your wings, your own wings. Respect them. Become a person who knows no bounds, who doesn't follow the rules of society without examining them, who seeks to make the world a better place. And you will fly, and we will fly. And that's a tradition that Madison, Wisconsin knows well, one of individualism. Madison, Wisconsin flies. <laughs>